Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So the characteristics of an absolute value equation, um, or a graph, I should probably say. And the best thing I always look at the characteristics is the obvious, the V graph, right? And the reason why we call this the V graph is because it makes the shape of a V. And there's a couple important things, though, for us to understand about this so-called V graph, all right? Um, first of all, you can see that the V has a, a point on the bottom. It has a minimum, right? And this is going to have a minimum or a maximum. Depends if it opens up, there's a minimum. If we have to reflect and it opens down, then it would have a maximum. But that max or min point is what we call the vertex, all right? So, and that's very, very important because when we get into our transformations, we are going to pretty much base our graph off of how we kind of transform our vertex. So that is going to be called our vertex. The next thing I'd really like for you guys to understand is understand like the axis of symmetry. Notice that this graph, if I was going to kind of draw a dotted line, I could take my scissors and cut this graph in half and then flip this over and it would be exactly the same. So you can see that there's the y-axis or at least the axis of symmetry goes through our vertex, right? And on the left side and the right side are going to always be exactly the same. Um, the last thing I'd really like to kind of point out to you is when we use a table of values for the equation y equals absolute value of x, that my graph, the reason why it creates that v is because when I go over 1, I go up 1. Over 2, I go up 2. And I create these points of my function. And that's going to be the same for to the left or to the right. The reason why that's very important is to understand if I have a graph and I do not have an A or I do not have a B, and I'm just transforming the graph, then the shape of the graph is not going to change. Obviously, I can shift it left or right and reflect it, but the graph, the slopes of these kind of lines from the vertex remains the same. However, if I'm going to input some numbers like 2, well, rather than going up 1 over 1, I'm going to go up 2 over 2. Or if that was 1 half, I'd go up 1 over 2. So when that value A is larger than 1, what that does is that kind of compresses the graph and it becomes a much more narrower V shape. And if it's less than 1 between 0 and 1, then it becomes much wider. All right. So those are some very important things to kind of understand. Think of these two lines as kind of like slopes coming off your vertex. Notice that the vertex is always at 0, 0, and that's always going to be your max or your min point for your absolute value. And, and also understand that's an axis symmetry. The reason why axis symmetry was so important is because when we go ahead and graph, or especially when we're using a table of values, all we need to do is if we just pick these points, I can reflect those two points over the axis symmetry to plot the other two points so that I can go ahead and graph. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are your characteristics for the absolute value equation. Thanks.